As per usual, guys, the rule of three will apply. Which means if I die three times, the game will end. We are not aiming for perfect. Yes, yes, we've seen this. Sega! Sonic or Tails? I don't... it's been a while since I've used OBS, admittedly. Oh, this is ve immediately very strange. But I seem to... like, I seem to remember you should be able to, like, individually... like, change the volume and stuff. Whoa, Nelly! Oh, gosh. So we're not going for a perfect ending here, guys. We are just going from right to left. You know, in other words, we're playing the game wrong. Amy Rose? Is Amy always at this level? Have I always jumped over her? Oh yeah, this is, it has gone back to the uh, American soundtrack, hasn't it? Oh, mine, of course, yeah, because when we played... When we actually played Sonic CD the other week, that, that was uh, using Fusion, wasn't it? I have not yet changed the sound settings accordingly in, uh, in Origins. I don't mind the American soundtrack, honestly. Like, I mean, I like them both. I would say the Japanese one's superior, probably, but I do like them both. So I don't mind. I don't know how I've managed to miss her. I'm, I, I don't know, maybe I've just like always been on the higher path and just like shot over her or something. Because like I kind of had it in my head that the first time you meet her is in the next level. When she gets kidnapped. Who knows, maybe I've forgotten. Oh no, state of this. Woo! <laughs> See, I feel like this boss looks better with red rather than pink. I get what they were going for with it, obviously, like... The, the pink looks nicer to sort of go with the, the good future. It's weird that Robotnik would think to do that, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, the Sonic CD adaptation of STC is so funny, it's unbelievable. So good. Uh, will you... Oh, Samuel the Master, welcome to the chat, by the way. Uh, will you buy Sonic Frontiers when it comes out? Absolutely I'll buy Sonic Frontiers when it comes out. I love me some Sonic. I don't have very high hopes for it, I will be honest. But, yeah, I'll be getting it probably day one. Fucking god damn it, I forgot that was there. Bye then. Yeah, doing uh, doing a three life challenge on uh, Mirror Mode. We're gonna see if I can uh, See if I can get through to the end <laughs> without dying three times. Probably not, it's gonna mess with my brain, I'm sure. Thanks for the follow, much appreciated. When I play old Sonic games, I do repeat a lot of the dialogue from STC. It sticks in the mind. 
I would know. Oh, I didn't even see that. Tentomushi, name of that bad neck, I think, which is uh, ladybird in Japanese. Oh no. Ah. Oh no. Oh gosh. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah, that bit's so cool. I'm gonna have to pop in on, uh, on some of your streams as you uh, go through the old STCs. See, when you're playing this, like, just for speed, you really rock it through the levels. The moral of the story is don't play the game wrong. <laughs> For on place on the run, maybe I'll have to check them out. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't even see that. Wasn't looking. What I get for being a big silly. Music is too calming, pretty much. Game's a bit lackluster if you don't play it right, yeah. But this is the thing, like, this is the source of most of the detractions that people have for CD, because they are playing it like a normal Sonic game. And if you do that, as we are currently demonstrating, you get a very quick game. You know, the level design's still fine, still good. But, yeah, it's a very different experience if you don't do it as intended, I suppose. But then again, it's one of those games you can play it how you like, really, can't you? You play how it makes you happy, as is uh, the Sonic way. special stage, why not? <laughs> oh. Immediately trip and fall on the spikes. Did I, uh, I adequately make clear that I'm not very good at these? Because I'm not at all. Oh gosh. Oh bloody hell. Thing, isn't it? Yeah. Rubbish. <laughs> 628 coins, what the freaking hell am I doing <laughs> with that many coins? Crazy, I wonder how high they go. Oh, there we go, 629. Like, is it? 999, is that the maximum? Is 9999 9, the maximum? Oh, bloody door. 
much as I love the uh, Japanese boss theme, this one's genuinely kind of fucking frightening, <laughs> so it works really well. There we go, nailed him tonight. I'm having loads of trouble with him the other night. Yeah, got it all unlocked now, which is great. <laughs> Tidal Tempest. Those tempestuous tides. Which, much like time, wait for no man. Oh shit, didn't mean to do that. Oh sorry, I've got springs. Point. Oh no. Oh for goodness sake. Oxygen. That's one. Lone Rebel is summer ninety six. What are your thoughts on Vince retiring? Oh, sorry, Homer's coming ahead. I hate this Fresh Prince sounding music compared to the Japan music. I never even made that connection before. <laughs> uh, Vince retiring. Wow. I mean, I never thought I'd see the day. I think we all assumed that the only retirement Vince McMahon would be taking would be uh, going out on his back in a pine box. As as was pointed out on Twitter, I can't remember who it was. I think it was either one of the wrestling journalists or a high-profile wrestling commentator on Twitter. You think of all the stuff that the wrestling dirt sheets have reported about Vince McMahon over the years. And how it's all just come to nothing. Like, like, seriously, think of all the worst excesses that we've read about. You know, may maybe not all of it's true. But if even, like, 10% of the worst excesses of Vince McMahon are true, and he's gotten away with it, that's kind of worrying. Two articles in the Wall Street Journal, and he's done. Whatever the full extent of this shit is, I don't know. But it don't look good for Vince McMahon. Uh, the whole thing about the you know sort of the missing expenses is obviously quite shocking. The fact that it apparently dated back to 2006 is astonishing. Oh, I love this little puzzle. This is quite good. Uh, I think, as a fan, I can say I'm indebted to him for the things that he did a good while ago. But, I don't think that negates what he's obviously been getting up to uh, personally. I, like, you know, Vince McMahon wrestling promoter and Vince McMahon human being <sighs> you you kind of got to look at them as two different things really haven't you like on the one well yeah exactly homie you, you committed tax fraud 
basically. And this, like, this is the thing. You know, the whole situation with, you know, the, this hush money thing. It's skeevy, and it's gross, and it's not cool. But, if both parties were consenting, that is not the issue, as far as I'm concerned. But the issue, of course, is he's used company money to cover it up. Which is obviously not good. Um, it's, it's fucked, and it's stupid as well, and it's, it's a large amount of money. I can't remember how many millions it is, but it's a lot. And it makes you wonder what in God's name he was thinking. Well, actually, do you know what? I know exactly what he was thinking. He was thinking, I'm Vince McMahon, I can get away with anything. How many times have we heard the old... Oh, I beat the federal government. Yeah, not this time he didn't, mate. He's believed he's untouchable for so long that he's actually tried to put it into practice. And found that... Not actually the case. Um... So yeah, he is one of the driving forces behind the two biggest boom periods in wrestling and my personal favourite period in wrestling. I can't ever take that away from him. But basically, in true Mr. McMahon fashion, he's fucked around and got his comeuppance. Took a while, obviously. And unfortunately, by the sounds of it, a lot of people have been hurt along the way. Oop, fucking hell, that was kind of crazy. But... The truth always catches up with you in the end. Uh, as for the immediate future of the company... I, I think we are only kidding ourselves if we think we're going to see immediate change. That's... I, like the, by the sounds of it, there were a few like small positives coming out of Raw this week, so that's yeah, that's good. But I think if we're looking for sweeping change, we'll be waiting a while. Um, though, honestly, I've got faith in the people that are in charge. I know Stephanie McMahon is not always the most popular wrestling personality with uh, the internet wrestling community. I appreciate that. I am stuck in a room. What do I do here? I'm literally just stuck in this fucking room. What the fuck? <laughs> oh. What the hell? That was so weird! Yeah, I appreciate Steph isn't always the most popular person with wrestling fandom, but she is a successful businesswoman. So she is, the, if you're going to give it to anyone to run the company, she is the right person to be made. Currently co-CEO with Nick Khan, who I assume is also fit for the role. I don't know much about him other than the fact he's got a bit of a penchant for balancing the books, and that's fine, that's his job, that's what he came to do. Uh, Triple H being in charge of talent, fucking love it mate. Very happy with that, and I know a lot of the wrestlers are happy with that, and honestly, when your wrestlers are happy, your product is better all around. So yeah, I don't think we're going to see big sweeping changes overnight, I imagine the next couple of months are probably going to be largely finishing off storylines they've had planned for a while. I suspect Clash at the Castle is probably going to be the first major sign of change. Because that's a big event that they're hoping to put a lot of eyes on the product with. It's obviously going to be a lot of people from outside America watching. It's, it's, it's too late for them to do anything about SummerSlam. Realistically. Just is. Um, but yeah, I think Clash at the Castle is probably going to be the first big event they do coming up where we see a bit of a change. I think it's it's probably going to be... 
I, I honestly feel like we'll probably do some new main eventers because they have fed everyone to Roman Reigns and there's no one left at this point. I don't fucking want Austin Theory as world champion, but that certainly seems to be the way they're going. I don't like Theory, I don't give a shit about him, but I feel like the only remain like we know that Roman Reigns is looking at going part time now. So the only remaining thing to do is get those fucking belts off him, give us the dream match with his cousin. That's that. I really fucked this one up, haven't I? <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I say, I, I don't really want fucking Austin Theory World Champion, and in a way I kind of hope that that doesn't happen, but they do seem to be building towards that. Whether they'll pull the trigger now that Vince is gone, I don't know. I think Triple H being a talent himself, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you here, one of the best to ever do it, he appreciates what makes a good not just a good wrestling match, but also like a good wrestling superstar. So if he's in charge of talent relations and you know that's gonna include hirings and firings he's gonna have a say in who gets a push, presumably. And say what you like about NXT and uh, the downturn of it, but the man knew how to book a show. So I'm looking forward to some cohesive fucking wrestling show. I'm also looking forward to them finally saying, you know what, Kevin, don't piss off, mate. Because it is well known that Triple H and Stephanie do not like Kevin Dunn. I would just like a wrestling show with good directing that doesn't give me a seizure to watch it. So yeah, I feel like change is on the horizon. I feel like it's a good thing that someone who did a bad thing has been caught out for doing it and is now being punished for it. Don't get me wrong, Vince is not... He's hardly going to live... Uh, you know, he's not... He's not going to jail. There's no way, there's no two ways about it. He's, he's just simply not. That's how it works when you're rich in America. Or even Britain. He will get away with it, but he won't fully get away with it. Because now I think the truth's going to be laid bare. But I think the future of the company... Yeah, I don't mind 2.0 either, honestly. I think the future of the company's probably in the right hands, honestly. And it, I think we all have known it's long overdue for, if not a changing of the guard entirely then, you know, a, a changing of the company's methodology. For absolutely well too long, the entire company is hinged on the whims of one man. And whether, you know, at the end of the day it's his company, or it has been until recently, obviously. It's... Vince is famously out of touch with his audience. And has been for a long time. So if nothing else, it's going to be nice to have an environment where some different voices get to maybe have a say. And hopefully some voices that know what makes a good wrestling show and what the fans are after in 2022. And I feel like Triple H is more that guy than Vince McMahon in 2022. With Triple H, Stephanie McMahon and Nick Connor Control, do you see the 24-7 title being gone as well as re retiring the title? I don't know. I mean, I could see them keeping it around because it's, it's kind of a comedy title, isn't it? I think... When they introduced it, I was like, ah, I'm not so sure on this. Because the 24-7 rule devalued the hardcore title astonishingly. But given they pretty much, like, it soon became apparent that it was a comedy belt and you're not entirely meant to take it seriously. So I don't mind it being the silly, funny backstage skit belt. That's okay. Um, if they did get rid of it, I wouldn't miss it. They're obviously not bringing the hardcore belt back. <laughs> it just doesn't fit with the company anymore. And I know there's all this... Oh, they're going TV-14. I would be astonished if that has any real meaning in terms of, you know, hardcore matches or naughty language or anything like that. Oh, that's two. I don't think it's going to mean any sweeping changes. Um... I'll be honest, I think I do think the company has too many belts. 
but I don't know how you fix that. Um, because with the brand split, you kind of need them. <laughs> but at the same time, there's still too fucking many of them, and I hate it. See, I was always fond of when they first brought in the original brand split, which you can hear me talk about on the Ruthless Aggression Relive podcast, um, where your women's champion and your WWE champion would defend their belts on both shows. And I kind of feel like that is a good way to do it, you know? So then, like, most of your talent can be on their individual brand, but then the champions being on both means sometimes things can be a little bit more fresh and, you know, they're not always fighting the same opponent. And at the end of the day, they've given both of the world titles to Roman, they've given both of the tag titles to the Usos. That's effectively where they are anyway at the minute. So right now, there's very little argument against doing it that way. Because that's what they're doing, you know? Oh, here we go. This one really tripped me up the other night, didn't it? This might be three coming up shortly. So I don't know. I, I, like I think the, I think a lot of the belts have been kind of devalued over the years. I'm looking forward to hopefully that changing. I'm also quite looking forward to Cody Rhodes becoming world champion because that's clearly on the cards. And as someone that loved dashing Cody Rhodes. Some of the thought undashing Cody was one of the best fucking things on TV. I am here for it. The man's a fucking nutter, but he's a great wrestler. Oh, that's three. Bollocks. 